YouTube, it's Brother Dennis. And today I give God all the glory. <sighs> I wanted to talk about something real quick. Um, pedigrees. Are they worth all the trouble? So I made a comment about pedigrees in my last video and I got a conversation started up in the comments. So I decided to make a video about it. How do y'all feel about pedigrees? Some people think uh, pedigrees are mandatory for you to uh, know how to breed birds and come out with a higher percentage breeding wise and you know basically be more consistent in your breeding program. They add value to your birds, value to your loft. You know, you could commercialize your loft by selling birds and stuff like that, or you or you could just it could help you breed more consistency. Um, a lot of the guys down here, and even some of the guys that aren't down here, um, some really successful fl flyers, they don't do pedigrees. Um, so I'm new. I come from the dog world where pedigrees do add a lot of value to your animals and uh, they do help out in the breeding program. So I understand both trains of thought. Me personally, I'm leaning towards pedigrees and uh, trying to start obtaining birds that have pedigrees. I do have several birds that have pedigrees. Uh, my breeders, so I want to start. Uh, I'm going to start uh, upgrading and upgrading their pedigrees or whatever, and I'm going to start creating pedigrees. For instance, I got let's say I got some birds from Adrian P. Came with no pedigree, so I'll just start a pedigree from this pair forward. You know, right? What the, the male did, where he came from, and then start going forward. But is that good enough? Or should I, if I don't have an eight generation pedigree, should I just get rid of the birds? See how they produce and move forward. Uh, pedigrees don't fly. Pedigrees don't produce anything. They're just, I believe they're, uh, they, 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 they're like a um, bonus to your pigeons, but ultimately you need pigeons to perform. Ultimately you need performance and um, so evidently somewhere, somebody, they had to start somewhere. Pedigrees have to start somewhere. Like, so uh, I am a believer in pedigrees. Um, I'm, at first I wasn't, as far as the pigeons went, because I, I, a lot of successful people I was getting birds from didn't, didn't do pedigrees. And I'm telling my guys that have been in birds 30, 40, 50 years, they could tell you how the birds are bred. And they and they win consistently, but they just didn't see a use for pedigrees, you know. So they have their own strain, their own breeding program, winner to winner and whatever, chicken dinner. So, but I will say this, and I want to talk about something because I had a bird, one bird, young bird die this year so far. And it's off the same pair that I had several birds die from last year. But last year was my first year breeding. So I put the two pair back together. The pair came from um, Curtis from Air Champ Lofts. Now, the story goes that he had bought some birds. He's supposed to have bought two pair, two hens, two cocks. But when he got the birds that come to find out, there were four cocks, all related. So, he sent me two of the cocks. Oh, well, actually, I bought a cock and a hen. And then he sent me another cock because I needed a cock. So he sent me a cock as a gift. The pedigrees and everything. But he sent me the two as a pair. The male and the female as a pair. So I kept them together. Well, that pair, last year, the eggs wasn't hatching. Or the babies was come out like retarded, like deformed or whatever. They were dying at weaning. Weird stuff. So out of eight eggs, I think only one made it to maturity. So I just chalked it off as this bad luck, whatever, woo, woo, woo. So this year, first eggs wasn't viable, which a lot of my eggs wasn't viable the first round. Their second laid, their second pair they laid, which was their first round of babies, only one hatched. That hit, that baby was doing great. I put it on the floor with six other babies, was doing great. I came out here one day, the baby was on his back, feet kicked up in the air, poop all over itself, 
looked like it was like uh like it was paralyzed its feet were like curled all up like it was spazzing out like its feet were like cramped all up deformed looking and it's like it was perfect when i banned it it was perfect when it feathered out and i had it on the floor weaning with six other birds no other bird had any symptom so Here's what I'm going to ask you because I've researched it in dogs. I researched it uh, before I got into pigeons. I was going to get into ball pythons. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of research on breeding and DNA and stuff like that because ball pythons, there's a lot of genetic diversity, but it's a lot of morphs and mutations. And it's a lot. Of, it's a big, big hobby. But I decided my wife was against snakes. So I decided to go into the pigeons. Does anybody have any experience with like lethal genetics? where a male and a female, you put them together and they just can't, for whatever it is, the genetics just are lethal. The babies don't hatch, the babies come out retarded, deformed. And you know, it happens in humans too. You know, you could, I could carry something, one in a million, you can carry, a female can carry something, one in a million, and we put us together, babies start coming out with like spina bifida and uh, cerebral palsy and stuff like that. And I think that this combination is a lethal combination now both of them have outstanding pedigrees they're great beautiful looking birds they just doesn't they just don't mix so i'm thinking about they're they're they're, they're actually there's the, uh the hen right there she's sitting on them two eggs i don't even know if they're any good i didn't even candle them i was gonna throw them out and split the pair up like i said they did have one healthy bird last year um, whatever it is, that's their last eggs that I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with those eggs, but I'm not going to let them breed anymore. But I wanted to know what y'all thought about what I'm saying about, has anybody ever experienced lethal genetics in pigeons, right? I'm not talking about inbreeding. I'm just talking about two birds that you stick together and for whatever reason, None of the babies live. None of nothing can come of it. None of, I mean, no matter how hard you try. And um, I'm gonna switch. I had a I had a I had a pair last year that wasn't doing well. The cock wasn't filling eggs. The babies wasn't um, living. But they were great foster parents. But when I gave that hen, when I gave that hen a new cock, no, I gave the cock a new hen this year. He's doing great. The female, actually, I tried to rehome and it just flew away. So the female's gone. The cock actually is doing great. Baby's looking great. So I'm going to split these two up um, maybe for one round. My, the next round, I'm going to split them up, but I'm not going to put them back together. Um, but I was asking, I wanted to ask, has anybody had any experience with lethal genetics? is it in pigeons i know it exists because like there's certain combinations in dogs like um mutations like merle if you breed two merle dogs together they'll come out blind deaf hairless you'll get a bunch of defects so i know it's in ball pythons there's lethal combinations where like involved with like, the spider mutation and a couple other things where if you breed two spider two two ball pythons together they have the spider uh gene in it all the babies will be born dead. Nothing will be viable. I know that you can get shark mouth. You get all kinds of crazy stuff if you if you do if you mix certain genetics. Does then and then see this goes back to the pedigree thing. Is it just certain birds, certain genetics you can't mix together, or it just is not viable? And I'm finding that this pair right here, this hen, right, who has an Indiana Hoosier background, great bloodline. And this cock right here, this this cock, this one right right here, right here, this cock, this the uh, dark check cock right there. That's her mate. That he has the Indiana Hoosier background. His 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 mother or whatever finished sixth in the Hoosier. Her her brother finished first or whatever. Like these these birds come with. These are the birds I have with pedigree. These are these are two of my pedigreed birds. Got it from Curtis Jackson. They were they're great birds. Pet, I'm happy with the birds. It's just that I can't, I'm not having luck breeding them together. The other male, where's he at? The other male that I got with, with uh, 
from Curtis. He's not out there. Where's he at? He's not, he's not out there. He's not out there. There's Mr. 500 right there, driving his hand. But yeah, he's not, he's not out there. He has a black band on his, on his leg. Okay, so actually I'm wrong. I'm not wrong, but that's him right there. That's actually him sitting on the eggs. He's actually sitting on his eggs. That's the cock right there, right? Yeah, that's him. He's feisty boy. That's he's an Indiana Hoosier cock. He uh he's a uh he 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 got a really good pedigree. So I'm gonna probably put him with the other with the other hen. Mix him up. Put him with her and uh put them in an individual pen and let them go at it. So that's probably what I'll do because their eggs are actually all four of these eggs, all four of these nests in here. Are, are laid on the same day. So they're on the same schedule. The only one that's out of whack is, is up here. So this is the second round. All these other birds are sitting on their second round. So yeah, so tell me what y'all think about that. The lethal genetic thing. And I, I'm not, I, I'm, 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 I, and I, what I'm saying is for knowledge purposes, no like bull crap like i'm not like i'm serious if you got like crazy comments just keep it to yourself because it i want to inform become informed and if i'm having the same questions maybe somebody else has the same questions i want to take this down it's getting it's hot here no open this up i can already feel it coming air coming in here so i had this up to help with the babies because i lost a bunch of eggs but it's getting hot in here. Come on, take off all your clothes. Oh, let's let y'all look at the birds real quick. Boy. These are actually my breeders in there. Some of my breeders in there. So I want to open up this uh, aviary. Because Mr. 500, let me tell you, he's a bully. So what he'll do is he'll have... He'll block that whole aviary, him and his girl. When his girl was walking in the, uh, the only reason why he's tolerating other birds out there now is because I'm in here. But when I leave out, if he wants to be, he's trying to drive his hen now. You see, that's him driving her. I'm trying to figure out language, bird language. But he's trying to drive her. She won't go to the nest because I'm standing in here. But he's trying to, he's got her in the corner, pecking at her. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 like my dominant pair. They run the roost in here. They run it. So here's my other basically breeding section, but this is young bird breeders. Um, it's there on their second round. That's a Bar Tom Barnhart pedigree birds. Tom Barnhart white bird here. She's got two babies actually. She, her first eggs didn't make it, but this these two did. Whoa, mama. Whoa, she's feisty. The two babies on the floor right there, weaned out, right? She's sitting on eggs. I don't know how good them eggs are. I'm not pressed. Actually, actually, that's the male because he's got white on his chest, on his chinny chin chin. And then look here. This girl laid eggs on the floor. So I put a nest bowl down and she's sitting on the eggs right by the door. So I know them eggs ain't no good. Because every time I walk in and out, she has to get up. So, but I leave them there just so they're not just constantly laying eggs. So, um, see, then I got to try to get out without my dogs eating them, eating the birds. Yep. So, that's where I'm at. Walk over here, give you an update on the, uh, the loft real quick. I got to put this down because my dogs will eat it eat this right y'all will eat this cardboard i gotta put the <laughs> gotta put the trash can up on top of the uh elevate it because they will chew it and eat it they do not care they do not discriminate sorry about the poor videoing quality i got one hand here all right hope all right so american bully so it's my loft looking like now. I painted it. I still got to trim it. I actually been trying to put the paper on the roof, but my son is supposed to help me climb up there. This side here, this is a. Uh, this in here is basically 
this side right now i'm using a storage for good i got a door i haven't put on yet i'm gonna recycle repurpose it but here's my young birds here's the aviary i'll put the 45s up but i haven't painted them yet oh yeah now you see how i did my ventilation this time i learned from my mistakes I, i'm gonna try this style right here i had to go and correct it on this loft see how i had to because my dogs were trying to chew through there and get them pigeons and i was like well my dogs can do it raccoons can do it and um so i put three quarter inch plywood on there put some holes in it so and it helped with the moisture moisture started getting in there